The thoroughbred is a magnificent animal, bred for speed, bred to compete, the sport of kings. Taba is drawing away, and Taba with Mike Smith, they win the Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby. It's the all new Let's Go Racing from Parks Casino and Racetrack. It's action packed and fun for the entire family. Bill Maricolo now in command. Let's Go Racing is proudly brought to you by the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association. It's fun to see them run. Welcome to Let's Go Racing. This is a special edition, our Pennsylvania Derby preview show. So sit back and relax. We have an hour fun filled show for Philadelphia's biggest day in horse racing. It is indeed the state, the country, really, Danny. In September, PA Derby Day has become the biggest day in North America of horse racing. I'm Danny Gibson, joined here with Dick Girardi, and we have a lot of friends with us today to help us talk about this big day. Really excited, too. So gates will open early 10 a.m. Get here. We have a special post of 1130 a.m. 1135 a.m. for our first race. We're going to start early because we have a lot of action. 14 races. Last year it was 13. Set our handle record of 18.8. Let's see if we can get to 20 million this year. Let's do it. Well, let's <laughs> take a look at the Bet Parks Grade 1 one million dollar Pennsylvania Derby for three-year-olds. It's a really good field. Really looking forward to a lot of these horses. Ship it in. We have one or two local horses as well. Indeed, I, I think Saudi Crown is not the morning line favorite, but I think he's gonna end up being favored for Brad Cox. He's really two noses away from being undefeated. Reincarnate for Bob Baffert, only trying to win the PA Derby for the fifth time in the last nine runnings. They're probably the two headliners, but as you said, there's some other very good horses in the race. Well, the boys don't get to have all the fun. The girls will be <laughs> lighting it up in the grade one, $1 million cotillion for three-year-old fillies. This to me is the star of the show. We get the Kentucky Oaks winner, pretty mischievous. Yeah, I mean, she's terrific. Three straight grade ones. Uh, I had a chance to talk to Brendan Walsh when I was up in Saratoga earlier, and I know he was really looking forward to coming to Parks for the for the cotillion. But again, she's not the only one in here. Ceiling Crusher for Doug O'Neill, the California bred, who's been only lost once, Danny. Now, she's mostly been running against cowbreds, now trying to open company for the second time. Who's your filly who was a really hot three-year-old earlier in the in the year? And of course, Foggy Night for Butch Reed and the wild story, backstory with Foggy Night. So yeah, the Cotillion's always been a cool race. This might be one of the best additions we've had. Well, we also have Majestic Creed coming in for our local trainer, Bobby Ann Hawthorne. She doesn't start in a lot of big races like this, her in our small barn, but they are really looking forward to it. And what a claim Majestic Creed has been, just $25,000. And now she's in the starting gate to run in a $1 million yeah, race. You need to claim a horse like that, Danny. Didn't you just claim a horse? Yesterday. <laughs> trying. <laughs> I can see you in the cotillion shortly. Maybe next year with Bossy <laughs> Kate. Well, we're going to head to trackside with our friends Jessica Paquette and Chris Griffin on more. Thanks, Dick. Thanks, Danny. Welcome to the Pennsylvania Derby. I'm Jessica Paquette, track announcer here at Parks, joined with Chris Griffin from the PTHA. Chris, it's an exciting day. Yeah, it really is, Jessica. Excited to see you. Excited to watch you do some history. And speaking of all that history, you had a chance to go through really all the history of the Pennsylvania Derby, so let's check it out. Standing inaugural. Now off in the inaugural running of the Pennsylvania Derby. The Pennsylvania Derby is a marquee event on the thoroughbred racing calendar and has developed into both a key prep for the Breeders' Cup Classic and an important stop along the way in the race for champion three-year-old honors. The legacy began in 1979, and the race quickly achieved graded status in 1981. From there, it was elevated to grade two status in 2004. They're in the gate. And they're off in the Pennsylvania Derby. And in 2017, it achieved prestigious grade one status. Since 2007, the race has offered a purse of at least $1 million. Trainer Bob Baffert holds the record for the most victories as a trainer with four. Bayern in 2014, West Coast in 2017, McKinsey in 2018, and Taba in 2022. Taba's got the front end, but here comes Zandon, who's rolling late, a 16th to go. It's Taba in the center of the racetrack, but Taba is drawing away, and Taba with Mike Smith, they win the Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby. Mike Smith and Jersey Joe Bravo have each ridden three winners of the race. Call a knock the call, yes sir, a knock the call and Joe Bravo with his third win in the Pennsylvania Derby. 
The list of winners reads like a who's who of thoroughbred racing elite, with horses like Broadbrush, Frosted, and Hot Rod Charlie among some of the decorated winners. Not to be outdone, the Phillies also have their moment in the spotlight in the Cotillion States. From 2006 to 2010, it was called the Fitz Dixon Cotillion to honor Fitz Eugene Dixon Jr. of the prominent Widener family of Philadelphia, who have been major figures in thoroughbred racing since the early part of the 20th century. Since the inaugural running in 1969, the Cotillion has produced multiple Eclipse award-winning champions, including Shuvi, Susan's Girl, A Shadow, Pave de Grace, Untappable, Midnight Bisu, and more. In one particularly memorable running of the Cotillion, local trainer John Service saddled Jostle, the hometown favorite, to win the 2000 edition of the race. Steve Asmussen holds the record for the most winners with five, 2012, 2014, 2018, 2021, and in 2022. Mike Smith has ridden four winners of the Cotillion. This year, in 2023, who will make history in the Pennsylvania Derby and the Cotillion Stakes? There is a rich history in the Cotillion Stakes and the Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby, and more will be added to that today. Now, Chris, what else can people expect out of the races? Yeah, great day on the track and a great day just right here trackside. I mean, like we said, it's going to be jam-packed behind us. So you got the free commemorative hat. That's the first thing, right? When you walk in, you get here early. We've always got that every single year. Looking forward to that. There's face painting for the kids. For the or the young at heart. Yeah. I think anyone can get their face painted. Are you going to get yours? I'm I'm all in. I am all in for the face painting. And so we've got some live music, fish out of water, they're going to be here. Uh, and just too many things to really list. It's just everything that you could possibly think of. We've got it. It's all free. Come on out. Maybe bet a few bucks. And the centerpiece of that is some world-class racing. And there are some great seats. Come out, get your seat, get your spot for the day. I have the best seat in the house up in the announcer's booth. So that one is taken. But the earlier you get here, the better seat you'll get. So come join us. Yeah, and the Mummers. They're, they're the, one of the biggest hits always here in the city of Philadelphia. So look forward to them. And they might walk by the booth there with our friends from uh, Penn Horse Racing. I mean, Donnell Mock, their entire team, they got a lot of stuff that they're doing. And Donnell actually is going to tell us about that. So let's throw it to Danielle. What's going on with the PHRA? Thanks, Jessica and Chris. We are so excited to be here today. PA Derby is always one of our favorite events. We've been traveling all summer long to our six Pennsylvania tracks. There's some great racing on today's card, so we're excited to be here. This is our last stop of the season, so it's always a great day to be here. Such a fun atmosphere. We have a lot going on today, including our virtual reality. So if you want to see what the jockeys see on a daily basis, you have to check out our virtual reality. So if you're here today, come down to the Picnic Grove area and check out our virtual reality. Put you right in the action. You get to see what it's like to be in a race. We are going to be out here at the Picnic Grove all day with our team. Stop to say hello to Jalen, Ashley, and I. We're so excited to be here and we want to meet our racing fans. This year we're excited to welcome our My Retired Racehorse to show off our stuffed toy ponies that represent our Pennsylvania aftercare. Each stuffed pony comes with a little bio of a racehorse here in Pennsylvania that has been retired and rehomed by a Pennsylvania aftercare program. We're always looking for ways to raise money for our Pennsylvania aftercare program. Something near and dear to my heart as someone who has raced horses here in PA. And if you want to come check them out, they're $25. It's a donation to the Pennsylvania aftercare. They're a great gift for the season or just a fun little item to buy today. Make sure to follow us on our social media platforms. You can find us on X, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. If you're looking to place some bets today and need some help, we have free pass performances online for the PA Derby race card. We have them online at penhorseracing.com slash wager warriors. If you want more information on the Pennsylvania Horse Racing Association, visit us online at penhorseracing.com. So get your free PPs, enjoy the race cards, and bet a few bucks. Now we've done our handicapping homework. We have picked all the winners for today's exciting day of action here at Parks. How do you bet? How do you cash in? Yeah, so many different ways that you can wager, and we want people to be here on site with us if they can be. But if you can't, the Parks Racing Phone Bet app has got your back. I mean, you can just easily download it. It's got up-to-date scratches. It's got real-time information. You can bet races from all over the world. But bet on those races right here at Parks, too. Now the only hard part is picking the winners. <laughs> yeah, the winners are the tough part. We're going to try to navigate through that throughout the afternoon. But uh, like I said, it's the easiest way to just go ahead and wager from your couch. If you can't be out here, make sure you guys get on that Parks Racing phone bet app. Now after this break, back to Dick and Danny with more Let's Go Racing. open 
the Bet Parks app. You're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the energy of being all in, the passion of a perfect parlay, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's another opportunity to win big every day of the week. Sign up for Bet Parks and get a welcome offer today. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. For years, the Wager Warrior has protected our tracks. Now he's on a mission to help his fellow warriors win big. Let's see how it's going. Hmm, Boats Rockland has been having a good run. He's definitely gonna show. Should I risk it on the win? Hey you, over here. No, down here. <gasps> Check out the past performances. I've sent them to your email. <gasps> I was just trying to help. Go to penhorseracing.com slash wagerwarriors to get your past performances today. The question a lot of people are asking themselves these days is do I buy new or do I buy pre-owned? Here's what I'll tell you. New car inventories are still low and new car prices are still high. However, with the certified pre-owned Nissan at Chapman Nissan, we have a huge selection and you can save thousands over new. Plus a seven year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty, roadside assistance, one year prepaid maintenance, and so much more. And not for nothing. Can you really tell the difference? I can't. Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Welcome back, everybody, to this special edition of Let's Go Racing. And come out, join us. We are going to have a great day. Lots of family fun. Hang in the picnic grove, uh, face painting, moon bounce, pony rides, lots of good and food 14 to eat. races. Yeah. And for some reason, you can't make it out here. We'll be live for two hours, 4.30 to 6.30 on NBC Sports Philadelphia Plus. Absolutely. Well, let's take a big look at the race. Let's start with the Bet Parks Grade One, one million, <laughs> one million dollar Pennsylvania Derby. When talking a lot about this race, this is our marquee race, and uh, we got some really nice horses. Indeed, we do. We got Grade One winners. We got horses that I think are about to be stars, uh, including specifically Saudi Crown. Do you have an opinion on this particular race? Something tells me you might. I do. Right? I think we might have a similar opinion, right. and sometimes we don't, but here we <laughs> definitely do. I think we both like Saudi Crown for Brad Cox. Look, he's a horse that's looking to take a big step forward. And to me, uh, I'm a handicapper that likes to use numbers. His mm -hmm. numbers don't lie. They just leap out at you off the page. And uh, Florent Giroux is going to give him a good or aggressive ride. Florent Giroux has ridden a few stakes races here, so he's comfortable with our track. And Brad Cox knows what it takes to win big races and he knows what it takes to big win big races here he does indeed and i think the race inside the race is going to be the race to the first turn uh who's fastest of the speed horses saudi crown is fast magic tap is fast scotland is fast reincarnate is fast i think saudi crown is the fastest well i'm looking for your eye st <laughs> louis to do what he does big upsets he's coming from post one with modern era if and he patrick, wins this race that'll be the all-timer <laughs> he will and patrick henry the jockey is getting his first ever graded stakes ride and uh, i talked to him yesterday he's not nervous he's just excited and cool. he's a really hard-working young man that's back here every day i'm rooting for him oh man i'm super excited you know this is like a dream come true for me in a sense I've been like, you know, visioning days like these. So I'm, I'm pretty much excited. 
And who do you like in the cotillion, Danny? Well, my heart's with Foggy Night, okay? Because yeah. I'm in the Butch Reed barn every day. Yep. But I just think Ceiling Crusher is going to get out there, get loose on the lead. I listened to your interview with Doug O'Neill that mm -hmm. you had the other night. Yep. The only uh, cinch I see in her plan is the track. If we do get the weather that we might get, mm -hmm. I think the track, I don't think she's ever faced wet dirt. I think that's going to be uh, not to her liking, but Edwin Maldonado is a really talented rider. He's riding on a high right now, and I think he's going to get her out there, and speed is dangerous, and she certainly has that. Yeah, no question. Look, Pretty Mischievous is going to be the favorite. She should be. She's one of the Kentucky Oaks. She's won three grade ones. Uh, but on the numbers, she's not that much faster than the rest of these fillies, including Ceiling Crusher, who is really fast. So you could be on to something with Doug O'Neill. He's won the PA Derby twice. Hasn't won the cotillion yet. Maybe today's the day. Yeah, really looking forward to seeing Divining Purpose as well. Well, let's take a little bit uh, look at the undercard. Let's just go through and give our picks. So yep. the Plum Pretties for Pennsylvania bred fillies and mares. And uh, I got some inside knowledge that Morning Matcha is training lights out. I saw her last work last Saturday. It could not be more impressive. To me, she's a standout in this field. Yeah, I agree. She, she lays over the field. She was second in the cotillion last year. This is a local race for PA breads. Morning Matcha is going to be coming from the back, but she's going to roll by them all and win by five or more. And what about for the marathoners? That's the Greenwood Cup. It's a mile and a half race. It's a long one. They go around there a few times. But next, the Big Gray. He's a standout in this division. He's going to have some good horses. This came up a really strong field, but I like next, the Big Gray. Yeah, I got no problem with next at all. Riding with Biden, trying for a repeat. Well, and then we have the Turf Monster. Now, this could change a lot if we do have uh, bad weather, but I got to go with my girl, Kate DeMassey. She's going <laughs> to run a Philly against the boys, all that magic. She's just changed as a, a racehorse when they put her on the grass, and uh, she's coming in. She is tough. And uh, something about Phillies when they get on the lead, uh, you know, they get really tough out there. Yeah, no doubt. Roses for Deborah is probably going to be the favorite. Irad Ortiz, Christoph Kalmak coming in from New York with a very similar record. Also a Philly, four for four on the turf. Alphabet Soup, uh, named for the great racehorse uh, for Pennsylvania breads. This is also going on the turf long. I'm going to go with the gray by land and sea. He won this race last year. He's doing great. Now, this horse can run on any surface, dirt, turf, synthetic. It doesn't matter. Yeah, I'm with you, Danny. I like by land and sea, too. Well, the Parks Dirt Mile, we have a superstar in there, and I think we all like him. Gunnite, he just looks like a standout. And uh, I don't think Steve wanted anyone to know he was going in there. Nah, I think he's going to be the shortest price on the card, and I think he's going to win. He's a two-time grade one winner. I don't think they're beating Gunnite in the Dirt Mile. Well, if the races aren't what tickles your fancy, there's lots of other fun things to do here. We're going to have lots of cool things. We're going to have giveaways, uh, raffles. Turning for Home will have a, a nice uh, booth in the lobby. Family fun in the Picnic Grove. It's going to be the place to be. It is one of the best events here in Philly sports. Well, we're really excited for our local trainer, Butch Reedy, ran second in the cotillion last year. He has Foggy Knight, who's been training so unbelievable. They almost ran her against the boys in the grade one Pennsylvania Derby, but they are running in the cotillion. She's doing great, and we caught up with trainer Butch Reed. Today is a big day for Parks based trainer Butch Reed and his team. His three year old filly, Foggy Knight, will face off against some of the top fillies in the country in today's $1 million Grade 1 cotillion, including today's favorite, Pretty Mischievous, winner of the Grade 1 Kentucky Oaks. Pretty Mischievous in front by two. Gambling Girl continues to rally. Gambling Girl trying to catch Pretty Mischievous on the wire. Pretty Mischievous, Gambling Girl. Pretty Mischievous held on. It's coming up the race of the year for three year old fillies. Uh with the, I think the Alabama winner is going to show up and the Oaks winner, so it's not going to be an easy task. Foggy Knight is coming off an impressive win in the prep for the cotillion, the Catherine Sophia. This three-year-old seems ready for the challenge. These two fillies slugging it out and it is Foggy Knight. Foggy Knight says, not on my home track today. She's really come a long way in a very short time. We were, we were high on her from the beginning and uh, she's coming along as the distance has stretched out. She's really uh, come to the fore. And we're excited to be able to do it right here at home in front of the home crowd and just be able to run right out of her stall. I think that's a big advantage for her. She's, you know, she has an amazing, quirky personality, very alert, loves to stand up in the front of the stall and come. And of course, my wife, Ginny, is uh, spoiling her with the cookies, but, uh, you know, she's got a very personal horse. We like her a lot. 
Foggy Night was purchased for just $20,000 last year at the April Ocala Breeder Sale by 94-year-old Bill Poppy Gottwells. His family owns the Brookledge Horse Van Company. Reed explained after the Catherine Sophia win how it all happened. Well, he felt a little guilty about having making so much money off the horse racing industry and uh, not really investing in anything. He went down to the sale by himself without a, any bloodstock agents or out any trainers and saw one he liked and picked her out and she turned out to be a foggy night. So it's a great story. He's 94 years old, I believe. Reed and his team knows what to look for when it comes to fillies. Past top fillies in his care include Viquis and Morning Macho, who finished second last year in this very race. They have to be athletes, and that's exactly what this filly is. You know, she's uh, Michael Jordan in the, in the equine set. She's long, tall, lanky filly with a nice balanced stride on her, and that's the main thing. They have to look like athletes. Foggy Knight has been training so well that Reed was thinking about running in today's Bet Parks Pennsylvania Derby. She's that good. What a day it would be if she can pull off the upset. Oh, that would be fantastic. We got close last year with the uh, morning matcha and we got a, left a little bitter taste in our mouth, but we really like to get the job done. But, uh, you know, it's going to be a tough, tough uh, road to go, but uh, we're going to give it our best try. Oh, what a big win it would be for Foggy Knight to win here on her home track for Team Reed. Indeed, it would. She won the prep race to Catherine Sophia. She's obviously trains over this track all the time. The Delaware Oaks winner. Why not Butch Reed win of the Cotillion? Oh, we love it. We'll be celebrating in the barn. Well, the PTHA, that's the Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association, I am so proud to represent. They help so many here on the backstretch. Yeah, they do indeed. Jeff Maddy, the executive director, has done a great job in his year plus, closing on two years, and all the people that work so hard on so many of the different programs at the PTHA. It's a wonderful organization, and I'm happy to be, know the people in it and be part of it. Here's more on the PTHA members who are trainers they understand what the trainers go through so our board is made up of the and the PTHA really does so much there's a whole community here on the backstretch of a racetrack and uh we couldn't do it without them yeah there's no question and look 20 years ago when the slots money came in, it's hard to believe it's 20 years now uh, Mike Belezzi and Sal DeBother did a great job of figuring out these programs that you just talked about Danny and that continues today with Bob Potts and the president and Jeff Maddie's executive director it's a cool organization run by nice people yeah and always want to give a shout out to our PTHA board without them we couldn't do this they give a lot of time into our program but we have a great show for you today normally you me and you would be we, done we'd be out of here at 10 30 don't go anywhere we've got another <laughs> half hour to go on this show and it's PA Derby Day and if you can't make it out of here and which you should do uh, you can watch us 4 30 to 6 30 on NBC Sports Philadelphia Plus well make sure you stick around because when we come back we have Jessica Paquette and Chris Griffin trackside In the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the anticipation of another face card, the thrill of an extra spin, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's all your favorite games at your fingertips. Plus, get up to $1,000 casino bonus back if you're down in the first 24 hours. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. PA Bread, I think we've built a, a brand at this point. The state of Pennsylvania has the best breeders program in the entire United States. Angel of Empire wins the Arkansas Derby and wins it clear. Caravelle in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Pennsylvania and the PHBA have the best state bred program in the country, bar none. The best breeders' awards and stallion awards in the country.
welcome back here as we get set for a great Saturday afternoon. I'm in the Picnic Grove area here at Parks Racing. And a little bit later this afternoon, it's going to be jam-packed with people from everywhere. In November of 2022, Jessica Paquette made history when she became the first female announcer here in Parks Racing history. A little bit later, she's going to be the first female ever to call a grade one race. Who better than our own Dick Girardi to sit down and interview Jessica before her big day. Just now, you're almost a year into this, more than a thousand races called. How much more comfortable now than when you started? I am so much more comfortable now. Now I get really excited as the gates are about to open. It doesn't feel necessarily like I'm jumping out of an airplane <laughs> 10 times a day. And I, I've really enjoyed getting to learn the horses, the jockeys, the horsemen and women here. And that's been really helpful in calling the races as well, kind of getting a sense of who's who. Now, talking to you months ago, you were very enthusiastic about September and getting to call a grade one race. What will it be like today calling not one, but two? It's a huge honor to get to play a role telling the stories on the biggest day of the year here at Parks and one of the biggest days of the year in racing in general. They're, these are going to be some of the best three-year-old Colts and Phillies in the country. Championship honors are on the line for a lot of these horses. And the fun thing all summer has been watching these horses in other races and going, oh my goodness, I might get to call that one. <laughs> Preparation-wise, what will be different about these two races than every other race that you do? Nothing. It's a race. That has been very important to me, to, and I got to test drive that a little bit. Sm Smarty Jones Day was batting practice, mm -hmm. because you really don't know how you're going to react on a bigger race until it happens. And you want to, you want to do a good job, but I want to do a good job on the bottom non-wares <laughs> of two lifetime as well. So the preparation is the same. You just try to rise to the occasion. When you got the job originally, there was much said about you being mm -hmm. the first female full-time race caller or racetrack in America. Now you get to be first female calling a grade one race. What does that mean to you? It's a huge honor to just have even a footnote in the history books of the sport that you've devoted your life to. And to be among some of the women that paved the way for me in various other areas of the sport, it's a real honor. Among other horses you're going to get to call, you're going to get to call the Kentucky Oaks winner, pretty mischievous. Three grade one wins, what will it be like for you to call the uh, winner of the best three-year-old filly race in the country? It's very exciting, and while I think she looks very formidable, of course, there are some local horses with a big chance as well. I think that race is shaped up to be just so competitive. Uh, it's going to be one for the record books for sure. What is so difficult for people who have never done this about calling horse races? It, you know, it goes really fast and you have to find the memorization and the tools and tricks that work for your particular brain. You can get all of the advice you want from great announcers, but until you find what clicks in your brain, it doesn't work. And you're not just going to wake up one day and be Tom Durkin, uh, regardless of how much I really wanted to be that be in that first week. So it's all very hard. And then it's also, for me, I approach it very much like I approach horse showing. I, I show uh, show jumpers and show hunters and you don't let one bad fence ruin your entire round. So it's learning to kind of keep going and go forward, even if you do stumble or make a little bit of a mistake. You have a lot of race caller friends. What's the best piece of advice they've given you? The best piece, piece of advice actually came from someone who's in racing but not a race caller, uh, who told me when I was first starting out and I was kind of hyper-focused on a lot of things, you're not a chart caller. And I mean, that, changed my perspective, that changed everything for me, that you're not a chart caller, you're telling a story. And, and the story of a race, do you anticipate what it might be as you're going into the race or do you just let it play out? With certain horses, I anticipate what they are going to do. Um, one of the fun things at parks is we have so many of these nice old war horses, mm -hmm. so some of those are quite predictable in the way they are going to run. But I think if you're anticipating too much, you're setting yourself up to not be adjustable. Tremendous job. Look at you. Magic of television. You were there and now you're here. Magic. We have the best <laughs> TV crew in the business. Oh I goodness. am really excited to get to play a small role in today's amazing day of racing and to showcase our horsemen and women. Now, we all want to look our best on these big days. And I know you spend some time with some members of our jockey colony getting correct you for know, the big day. It's one of those things. Jockeys, they really, they always wear a helmet, right? But they always want to make sure their hair looks good and make sure they got a fresh cut. So I got a chance to head locally here to a local barber shop and, uh, we had a little bit of fun. We had some haircuts and we had some good chat. So let's check out some members of our jockey colony over at the barbershop. What's up guys, it's Chris with the PTHA and down here at Mitch Cutch, which is right down the road from the racetrack. And I found out that all our jockeys and trainers come over here. So I'm gonna sit down with Frankie Pennington, and hang out a little bit and get that fresh fade for PA Derby Day. Frankie. What's up? What's up, fellas? Training done? 
Yes, Work is done. done. Everything done. worked. Busy morning. Beautiful morning. Beautiful Love morning. it. Ready to get cut? Yep. Let's go, man. Let's do it. Let's do it. What's up, man? How's everything going? Oh man. So, when you get a cut, like, how often do you get cut? Usually every two weeks. Every two weeks. Every two weeks. You know what's? It's so funny when I think about jockeys, right? Because right. they're always wearing helmets. Right. Almost every jockey wants to make sure, like, fresh cut. Right. Edged up. Why? I don't know, I think it's just something about being clean, clean cut, yeah. but I mean even me, even that, I always get every two weeks and I still always end up putting my hat on, I'm always wearing the ball cap. When did you move to Philly? I moved to Philly when I was 16. My agent Bobby Martell, uh, yeah. he was, I was like I guess his oldest son now, but <laughs> he uh, he took me in when I was 16, I stayed at his house. In, 16? Uh, 16, yep. So what, you were sleeping bag, it was a uh, crash on the couch? Or yeah, no, nah, he had a he had a spare room downstairs. I used to sleep with his dog, Samba. Okay. He used to sleep in bed with me over there, but it was, uh, he took good care of me. Yeah. You always been Frankie? Yeah. Nickname or like, it's Frankie? It's Frankie. Well, I mean, when I was a kid growing up, my uh, my family, they all called me Baby J. Okay. Like Baby Junior, because my dad's Frankie Senior, yeah, yeah, so yeah. they always called me Baby J. Yeah. Because it doesn't seem like you stress. No, nah, I usually, I'm a pretty relaxing guy. I don't yeah. like to, I try not to stress too much, but uh, yeah. I usually just go with the flow. I mean, whatever's gonna happen is gonna happen and nothing we can change about it. For 16 and you started riding, what was hurting? Arms, legs? Oh, my arms, <laughs> my arms and my legs. My stepdad, he uh, he used to put me on horses and he'd go along with me with the pony starting off and he'd kind of like drop the strap a little bit to kind of make me grab him more. Okay. And I never forget, that's when I really started loving breakfast. Okay. I'd get so done and be so tired yeah. that I couldn't wait to eat breakfast. Two eggs over easy, white toast and bacon. That was it. That's it. I still go to it. Still, still, still eat that every day. I love Philly cheesesteaks. You do? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how can you not? Yeah, right? How you got, you got a good spot, a spot that you really like? I used, when I was over here, I used to go to Steve's. Yeah. It's called Steve's. Uh, my valet, Ronnie, who's actually from Philadelphia, yeah. he uh, he told me about it. In, uh, Really good cheese. Yeah, when you Stuart Elliott obviously was riding a pretty good horse named Smarty Jones. Right. You ever talked to him? Absolutely. Yeah, we uh, we we when he was here, we'd fish the fishing tournaments every okay. Tuesday. So every Tuesday. Every Tuesday night, we okay. fish the tournaments. What were you and, catching? What were, what were uh, we? bass? Always bass. Yeah, largemouth bass, or sometimes hopefully small smallmouth bass. But you the best fisherman in the jock room? Uh, I would think so, but <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, but yeah, going back to that. So fishing tournaments on Tuesday. But uh, yeah, we. Do that and we'd always talk and I'd always ask him you know how was it and he'd always say it's you know you got your regular races and stakes and stuff you'd win but he said uh, a race like that is just he said something you can never really explain it's because yeah. ever pretty much every jockey always dreams when they start riding to win that race so he said when he won it it's like something you can't even explain next time I get to hang out with last year's leading apprentice at parks Andy Hernandez Chris, I'm impressed. Your hair looks great. Mitch Cuts, right here in Ben Salem. They did right by you, our jockey colony. Picture ready for the day. Yeah, they really did a phenomenal job. How long do you think that took to get the hair done? Like, a guy's uh, haircut. I know how long it takes you to get ready. <laughs> it's, it takes a little bit longer than most. But uh, yeah, great time over there with some of the members of our jockey colony. And uh, Donnell Mock, actually, is going to come back here and talk about more that Penn Horse Racing's got going on. So let's throw it out to Donnell to see what's going on trackside. Thanks, Jessica and Chris. The PA atmosphere is always so fun here at PA Derby. One of my favorite things of PA Derby Day has got to be the fashion. So you see a little bit of everything here, some great outfits. We're going to be walking the apron today and handing out swag bags to anyone that we think is best dressed. If you haven't already, you have to check out our Amazon storefront. We put together outfits for every event that we've gone to this season. We have everyday outfits that we put together in our Amazon storefront and all the proceeds from the Amazon storefront benefit Pennsylvania Aftercare. So it's a great way to treat yourself while helping Pennsylvania Aftercare programs. If you also see us on the apron as we're handing out the swag bags, ask us about our sizzling steak sweeps. We're giving away a Blackstone griddle this year with accessories. It's completely free to enter. Check us out. We're gonna show you how to enter in our sweepstakes. So if you see us, stop by. We wanna see your outfits. We wanna put them on our social media. You can find us on X, Facebook, Instagram, Threads, and TikTok. Ask us if you see us or stop at our booth. We're in the Pickett Grove area and check out our giveaway. There's just some great racing on today's card, so we're excited to be here. If you're looking to place some bets today and need some help, we have free past performances online for the PA 
NBA Derby race card. We have them online at penhorseracing.com slash wager warriors. We also have a lot of great merchandise for sale and all our proceeds benefit Pennsylvania Aftercare. If you want more information on the Pennsylvania Horse Racing Association, visit us online at penhorseracing.com. Back to you, Chris. Thanks so much, Donnell. Looks like a lot of fun on this great afternoon here at Parks Racing. Don't forget to visit PennHorseRacing.com slash Wager Warriors. You can scan that QR code. They've got free past performances. That's going to give you all the data you need for this big day. Speaking of winning selections, we need some help. We're going to have Jessica Paquette and Dick Girardi. It's our PA Derby Roundtable. It's all coming up when we're back here on the Preview Show. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moment. It's the confidence and underdogs covering, the tension before a clutch turnover, and the pride of a parlay paying off. It's another chance to win big with all day action. Plus, win your first $10 bet and get $125 in sports bonus bets. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. The question a lot of people are asking themselves these days is do I buy new or do I buy pre-owned? Here's what I'll tell you. New car inventories are still low and new car prices are still high. However, with the certified pre-owned Nissan at Chapman Nissan, we have a huge selection and you can save thousands over new. Plus a seven year, 100,000 mile limited powertrain warranty, roadside assistance, one year prepaid maintenance, and so much more. And not for nothing. Can you really tell the difference? I can't. The Pennsylvania Thoroughbred Horsemen's Association is the advocate for Parks Racing's horsemen and has worked hard to secure better lives for the hundreds of trainers and their families that work in the thoroughbred racing industry. Our horsemen benefit from medical coverage, trainer pension plans, and increased purses. Thanks to these horsemen, racing at Parks is the very best, providing entertainment for you and the entire family. The Pennsylvania horsemen are proud to be part of the community and introduce a new generation of fans to the sport of kings. Racetrack Television Network brings you every race, from every track, on every screen, every day. With monthly packages starting as low as $5, RTN gives you great value and access to more live HD streaming and race replays than anyone. Visit RTN.TV today to sign up and watch on almost any device, including Roku and Amazon Fire. RTN has packages that start at $5 per month. We are so excited about the Pennsylvania Derby, but the entire car. And so we're sitting here in the picnic grove, watching training, enjoying a beautiful day here at Parks. And we're going to take a look at some of the races we are all looking forward to. Now, Dick, I know you talked to Bob Baffert. History is going to be made this weekend regardless, but he's looking for his fifth win in this race. Yeah, in the last nine years. And I did have a chance to talk to Bob and talk to him about his previous four PA Derby winners, and obviously this year with Reincarnate, and how they compare. Here's my conversation with Bob. Byron, McKinsey, West Coast, Pava last year all win the Pennsylvania Derby. At this stage, where is Reincarnate in relation to those horses? Well, I, I think that Reincarnate, uh, he he's sort of on the same path that uh, West Coast was. You know, he's coming off that Los Alamitos Derby win and really hadn't, uh, I don't think he'd really made any, you know, hadn't hit, the, hit anybody's attention. It wasn't on the radar yet, you know. 
And so, uh, but he's a horse that's getting better and better. Uh, I, I thought it may be taken with the Travis, but I thought it was a little bit be too tough of a ship for him. And the Saratoga, it, it can be a little bit difficult sometimes, you know. But um, I don't know. I, I think this is going to be a race for him that we'll we'll find out more about him. You know how he handles this kind of company, and uh, he is a speed horse. I like to run the front end there, and uh, his other horse, the uh, is it Saudi Crown? That's it. Yeah, Brad Cox's horse. Yep. Yeah, he looks. He's a pretty good horse. You know, we beat him with Fort Bragg. You know, barely. It was uh, just a. Uh, you know, I think he's a. You know, I. I think he's probably the horse to beat. So. Uh, so I, I think it's going to come down to you know you, you find out what kind of a uh, you know it's, it's a it's a it's a class check you know but I I think he's doing very well so uh, I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, reincarnate is the morning line favorite, uh, Jess, but I don't like reincarnate in this race. I'm going against Bob Baffert. I don't know if that's wise, but I'm doing it. What do you we got on this PA Derby? I admire a bold choice. <laughs> now I know you said that this is a, your pick is a stone cold lock. Stone so cold when lock. When you want refunds, go see Dick Girardi. There will be no races. need for refunds. Saudi Crown is winning the Pennsylvania Derby. Not only is he going to win, it's not going to be particularly close. The races to the first turn, Jess. If he gets there first, they're not going to catch him. My man. Florent Giroux, he sends everything like he's the Los Alamitos quarter horses, and I think he'll be in front, and I don't think they'll get near him. I admire a bold opinion. <laughs> I am actually taking a wacky selection. Ooh, I like that. Not you. Wacky? How can that be? I've been known to take a swing on occasion. <laughs> I'm a little intrigued by Magic Tap for Steve Asmussen. To me, this horse has all of the trappings yep. of that second half of the year Steve Asmussen horse that kind of flew under the radar, mm -hmm. was a little bit slow developing, yep. and now... Now that fall and the big races are coming, he's starting to hit his best stride. So Magic Tap, I'm intrigued. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, he's also a speed horse, and I looked it up. He's been in against some really fast horses. He's actually the horse that concerns me the most. And I don't know that he can beat Saudi Crown, but he could beat him to the first turn. That would change things. I hope that doesn't happen, because then what I just said probably will be moot. Uh, but I'm going with Saudi Crown. It's interesting. Magic Tap, a son of Tappet. You'll love this history lesson, Jess. Uh, Tappet's final race was in the 2004 Pennsylvania Derby. I remember that. <laughs> and Tappet, of course, went on, has gone on to be just a prolific stallion. Indeed. He certainly stamps his offspring in a lot of ways. Now, right to the outside, what do we do with Scotland? So Scotland, to me, yep. is interesting because this race comes up really heavy on pace, in it, theory. It, it does, if indeed. If Saudi Crown can't clear, it's going to get really contest contentious on the lead. And Scotland has shown that he can kind of rate a little bit. Yeah, my theory on Saudi Crown is he's the speed of the speed. He's the fastest of the speed horses and if that does happen then the other speed horses to me are he's going to run them out of the race that would include magic tap it would include scotland and in talking to baffert he thinks reincarnate's going to be right up there too i mean he's california speed so he figures to be up there but yeah I, I, scotland was a really late entry by belmont i don't think anybody even in the racing office was expecting Surprise. it and then all of a sudden hello we're dropping scotland in there so yeah he certainly it, look he set the pace in the travers I don't know if it was the distance or the company that he wasn't good enough, but certainly he's off his previous races, he's got a chance. Now, what do we do with Il Miracolo, the Smarty Jones winner? I think he does deserve some respect he for does. the race over the surface. No, agreed. I, I thought he was good in the Smarty Jones. It's interesting, Just They ran him in all those prep races where he was completely overmatched. And normally a horse like that's going to get discouraged, right? They're just, that's it. But he's now in his best form of his career. Now, that was a good race, but this is a different caliber of horse he's in against. And by the numbers, and you know I'm a numbers guy, Saudi Crown, 106 buyer, 105 buyer. He's two noses away from being undefeated. And if he had won the Jim Dandy and won the Dwyer, he'd be four to five in this race. Easily. So back to Maricola for yep. just a moment. Uh, you know, as the announcer, I get to watch races from a little bit of a different perspective sure. than I ever got to do as a paddock handicapper or yep. a fan. Yep. And the thing I really noticed about him is Luis Saez did everything he could to keep this horse straight. He mm -hmm. was so hard to handle. I'm curious who winds up riding him yep. and if the outside post is actually a little bit better for him because he did look like he really just wanted to get out the entire He was way. out beyond the, the crown of the he track and the stretch. And could you, could you even middle. see him at the end of the race? You know, it like, made my first it, grade it was a very memorable one, looked, I will say. It looked like it was underneath the announcer's booth by the end of the race. I luckily have great <laughs> sight lines up there, but I was watching going, oh, you're just, you're continuing to come over this way, aren't you? Yeah, but, but make sure we understand here that Baffert is in the race. I called him last year after the PA Derby. I texted him. I said, they're going to rename this race the Baffert Derby because he wins so much. So reincarnate is a horse who's getting good. The question is, is he anywhere near these other Baffert horses who are late developers like Taba and West Coast and all that? I don't see it, but he's here and he's dangerous. Now stay tuned. We'll be back with a look at the Cotillion Stakes and the undercard races from Pennsylvania Derby Day. When you open the Bet Parks app, you're in the zone. 
Winning is always a rush, but the money is in the moments. It's the energy of being all in, the passion of a perfect parlay, and the pure joy of a jackpot. It's another opportunity to win big every day of the week. Sign up for Bet Parks and get a welcome offer today. You play for fun, you love to win. You bet. Bet Parks. For years, the Wager Warrior has protected our tracks. Now he's on a mission to help his fellow warriors win big. Let's see how it's going. Hmm, Boat's Rockland has been having a good run. He's definitely gonna show. Should I risk it on the win? Hey you, over here. No, down here. <gasps> Check out the past performances. I've sent them to your email. <gasps> I was just trying to help. Go to penhorseracing.com slash wagerwarriors to get your past performances today. I think we've built a, a brand at this point. The state of Pennsylvania has the best breeders program in the entire United States. Angel of Empire wins the Arkansas Derby and wins it clear. Caravel in the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint. Pennsylvania and the PHBA have the best state bred program in the country, bar none. The best breeders' awards and stallion awards in the country. Welcome back, everyone. Jessica Paquette and Dick Girardi here. Now, the Phillies will not be outdone on a day like this. There's some serious star power in the Cotillion Stakes, including the Kentucky Oaks winner, Pretty Mischievous. She looks awfully formidable. What do you think? Yeah, I think she's probably already the three-year-old Philly champ, uh, Jess, but this will just help solidify that if she wins her fourth straight grade one, and really none of the others in the division have more than one. So, yeah, she's terrific for Brendan Walsh, and Tyler Gaffleon has done a really nice job with her. And he says, and I think he's right, she's probably better around two turns than one, and she gets to come back to two turns for the first time since the Kentucky Oaks uh, today. And she's the kind of Philly that doesn't win by these big, gaudy margins, right. but she's very commanding in the way that she wins. Now to her inside, a couple of interesting yep. Phillies. Yeah, for sure. Ceiling Crusher is coming in for the West Coast. She's a California bred for Doug O'Neill, and her record is sensational. Five out of six. The question is, you know, what has she been beating? It's mostly been cow breads, but Doug is convinced she is good enough to run against these kind of horses, and I got a chance to catch up with Doug O'Neill. So, so yeah. she's been in against mostly against cow breads, Doug, till the last time. What what gets you the uh, the thought that she can jump from the spot she's been in, and now obviously she's tackling a much different and more difficult spot here in the Cotillion. I think just the way she's been doing it, you know, she's been so impressive in her victories, and um, and just the way she trains on a daily basis, she's just uh, uh, acts like a special horse and, and uh you know she's gotten a little bit of a uh, a trouble trip a couple starts ago but if you put a line through that uh you know she really hasn't done anything wrong so she's just uh a real blessing to have her on the barn and I'm super grateful for her and and uh you know we're looking forward to, to coming to parks with her now we do have a pair of grade ones on the day, but there's no shortage of exciting action all throughout the undercard. The racing office did a bang up job making a really competitive card, a handicapper's dream a little bit. So let's start with the Greenwood Cup, defending champion riding with Biden. Where do you see him here? Uh, look, I think he's going to be in the lead. I think he can win like he did last year. But having said that, just very formidable competition that wasn't in the race last year. Next is a true marathon star. And this horse has won it a mile and a half twice. A mile and five eighths, a mile and three quarters. You know, you know, you ever run a marathon? You know anything about that? I know a couple of things about <laughs> about long distance running, so I really can appreciate these true marathon types. So riding with Biden to me has been so interesting to see. He got a bit of a vacation after the Pegasus World Cup. Butch Reed really listens to his horses, sent him to the farm. And the way he has come back this year, he looks like a different animal than the riding with Biden I remember from last year. He comes into the paddock on the muscle, breathing fire, not using himself up at all, but saving it all for the racetrack. And I think he's just been in dynamite. 
Yeah, and there's no question what they're going to try to do with him. They're going, no. they're going to the front and see if they can hang on. But again, next is he'll he'll be coming. It'll be in a, really a fun Greenwood Cup. I think so as well. And now the Turf Monster. This is probably my favorite race on the undercard. It mm -hmm. really attracts a really fun group of horses. Yep. We have potentially roses with Deborah. I mean, really tough to argue, undefeated yes. on the turf. Yep. And she is a Philly taking on the boys here. And who do you like? Yeah, I, I like her. I think she's the one. Uh, Irad Ortiz is coming in to ride for Christoph Kleman, who's had great success in this race with the great pure sensation who's in the Parks Hall of Fame because of his, uh, how much, he, how good he was in the Turf Monster. You got Nobody Listens, who's certainly fascinating, coming off the Parks Dash, the Indiana Bread. Indiana Bread? What's up with that? And Kate DeMassi. come from anywhere. Yeah, Kate DeMassi has all that magic. Another horse, Philly, who's undefeated in four starts on the grass. And I am going a little bit maybe sentimental here. With That's okay. The we'll, let that we'll let that happen. Thank you. Yes, Once yes. in a while. So <laughs> I spent a couple of summers at Colonial Downs, and I've gotten to see Determined Kingdom kind of grow up. Mm -hmm. As a two-year-old and a three-year-old, he won stakes races at Colonial for Phil Schoenthal. Came back this year as a four-year-old, and he just keeps getting better as he's gotten older. He's been very well-developed. I'm really excited to get to see him and to get to call a horse that I've handicapped so many times. It's one of those just fun things for me as the announcer now. But I'm also intrigued by Talented Man. I think he showed last mm -hmm. time he can really run with mm -hmm. the big dogs. Yep, and Michael Moore won this race last year with That's Right, so he's dangerous. Very dangerous. And now, yes. the Dirt Mile. Yes. Is this a free square with Gunite? What do we do with this? He's a free square. I think so, uh, too. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people, I know he was nominated, but I don't think a lot of people thought he was actually going to show up. But Steve Asmussen wanted a race between Saratoga when he won the Forgo, the grade one. He won the Hopeful as a two-year-old, a grade one. And then he's going to go on to the Breeders' Cup Dirt Mile. And, yeah, he's going to be an overwhelming favorite. He's kind of like Jackie's Warrior was when That's they, he they snuck him in here in the gallon pop a couple of years ago. So, yeah, I don't know how they're beating Gunite. No, for me, if I'm playing any sort of horizontal wager here, it's a single move on, look for some value, and then you can make your tick a little bit deeper Yep. yep. And speaking of tickets that may need to go a little bit yep. deep, yep. Gallant Bob is, I think, the most interesting and competitive race on the card. Yeah, I had less of a feel for this race than any at all. And I know you actually have an opinion here, so why don't we see what you like? I am known for having a strong opinion on occasion. <laughs> and I think this race has a, quite a few interesting contenders, including Davins Mound, who Michelle Lovell has finally gotten back in form. This horse showed so much promise as a youngster. Yep. And I think he's been a little bit probably frustrating as he's <laughs> kind of struggled to get his best footing. But that win last time out was good. But I'm looking for the hometown hero and not the one you're thinking of. Gordian Knott obviously deserves a ton yep, of respect. For sure. Shows up every time. But Praetorian Guard, don't dismiss this horse. Right. He is a huge closer. He'll be last for a fair portion of the race. <laughs> and he's one to keep your eyes on. Dexter Haddock, I think, uh, vastly underrated as a rider here, especially a board of closer. His sense of timing is impeccable. Now, Dick, you had a cinch in the Pennsylvania Derby, I of did. course. I and I think you have another strong opinion in the alphabet suit. I do. I'm a huge fan of by land and sea. He won this race last year. I don't care if it's on turf or dirt. Actually, I think he might be even better on dirt, but we're hoping it stays on the turf. But yeah, I love by land and sea. So a couple of singles for you for the day. Some strong yeah, opinions to base your tickets off. Very strong opinions. I will be playing the contest today that I finished second in last year. And if both of those horses win, I will be winning the contest. I like the confidence. <laughs> now, let's give our selections for yes. the Cotillion Stakes. My top three, pretty mischievous. Foggy Night, I respect the hometown heroine, yep. and a cult for Chad Brown. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm similar. I, I can't go against Pretty Mischievous. Even though our numbers don't dominate, a record is, just speaks for itself. I like Ceiling Crusher second because I think there's a chance she's getting to the front. And yes, the Foggy Night closing late to be third. Now give me your top three in the Pennsylvania Derby. Well, we know who I like in the <laughs> Pennsylvania Derby. This is a Stoke Cold single on Saudi Crown. Jess, I'm kind of looking for some bombs in here, and I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use yet. And, and so I'm not going to give them out because I might need to use them in the contest. And I don't really want to give away all of my secrets. That's stealthy. I but like the But Saudi strategy. Crown is a stone cold cinch. Well, I'm trying to beat your luck <laughs> with Magic Cab, and then I'm going to use Saudi Crown and stop it. Oh, Best of go. luck to you in the contest. Indeed. Best of luck to all the horsemen and women competing on Pennsylvania Derby Day. And of course, everyone joining us out for the day, the horse players and the fans. Have a wonderful day.